Hello, I'm once again joined by my friend John. Hey everybody. And we're continuing our reviews on the Hammer Dracula series with Taste the Blood of Dracula, the fifth film of Hammer's Dracula series. Acting as a direct sequel to the previous film, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. Um, what do you think of this one? I mean, I don't think it's, like, the worst. I mean, I definitely think it's, like, a weak film. It has, like, some highlights and lowlights to it. I would say this is definitely one of the weaker of yeah. the series. Yeah. Uh, apparently this was not originally written to be a Dracula movie. Watching the movie, you can kind of tell. I agree. Especially with uh, Ralph Bates' character, who you see in the beginning of the film. It's kind of building him up, like he's going to be the main villain. And then all of a sudden, he turns into Dracula. So you could tell that Dracula was kind of shoehorned into this. Yeah, I agree. It actually reminds me of, this was years later, but it reminds me of what they did with a lot of the Hellraiser sequels, where a lot of the... Hellraiser sequels that Miramax put out that were released straight to DVD, those were standalone horror scripts that they decided to shoehorn Pinhead and the Cenobites into. What happened with this movie kind of reminds me of what would later happen with the Hellraiser series. So, what the plot of Taste the Blood of Dracula is it picks up where Dracula has risen from the grave left off. It begins where a businessman accidentally stumbles upon the scene of Dracula's death. And after Dracula dies, he melts down into this blood-like liquid, and then that liquid turns into a red powder. Some time goes by and we start following these three men who on the surface appear to be very conservative and very pious, but in reality they secretly go to brothels. And while at one of these brothels, they meet a young Satanist named Courtly, who convinces them to partake in a satanic ritual. Courtly ends up purchasing the remains of Dracula from the businessman that we saw in the beginning of the film. And basically, Courtly's goal is to bring Dracula back from hell. So, during a ritual, Courtly drinks Dracula's blood, but ends up in a state of severe agony. So, instead of helping him, the three men end up beating him to death. So, then Dracula is reborn through Courtly's body, and Dracula starts going after these three men to apparently avenge Courtly's death. What do you think of the characters in Taste the Blood of Dracula? Well, despite that Dracula's the villain in this film, but the, uh, the real villain was uh, Alice's father. He was the real jackass. Oh, the I real fucking jerk. hated this I, character. I was like, you know what, this guy character has to die. I'm like, I hate this character. If he dies, it's not a big loss. Yeah, there's, um, this is technically a spoiler, but when Alice hits him with the shovel, and of course it's Dracula sort of influencing her to hit him with the shovel, but in that scene, when that scene came up, I clapped. Same. Like I, because compared to Dracula and Alice's father in the movie, I would take fucking Dracula. Yeah. I've... Yeah, the character of Alice's father uh, was such a worthless human being. Not only that, he was like, he was... Not a good husband. Not a good, he was like really an unfaithful person. He was a neglectful father. He was just not and, a good and he guy. was a hypocrite too because yeah. he was all he was so pious and yeah. yet you see him go into a strip club. Yeah. And you, you see him p try to perform a satanic ritual. Like yeah, he, he's a hypocrite. And again, you can tell that the character of Courtly, he was originally going to be the main villain. You can tell that watching the movie that Dracula in the movie because technically in the movie Dracula is possessing Courtly's body. The, the thing that's weird about it is, you see Dracula say, they have killed my servant, I will get revenge, and it's like, I don't buy that Dracula would care that much about one of his servants, that he would be trying to avenge the death of one of his servants. Maybe you're supposed to assume that a part of Courtly's spirit is still in Dracula, so maybe it's also Courtly working through Dracula to get revenge on these people, but it's like... They should have explained that, like maybe have some scenes where he all of a sudden transforms back into Courtly and maybe it goes back and forth between him being Courtly and him being Dracula. Like, they could have done something like that, you know? Well, besides killing Alice's father who deserved it, the other two, it's like, why would Dracula want revenge on people who resurrect it? It makes no sense. So, uh, what do you think of Alice and what do you think of her boyfriend Paul, which interestingly is the same first name as the protagonist of the previous <laughs> film? I guess Hammer really loves Paul. No, I, I, I love them. They were great characters. Alice was very sweet and kind and nice, and her boyfriend was a gentleman. Yeah. I mean, you do see her, like, start to work with Dracula, but you realize, okay, it's Dracula corrupting her mind. Yeah. And I love when there's a certain point 
where towards the end she says, have I pleased you, master? She's saying this to Dracula, and Dracula just turns to her, I have no further use <laughs> for you. Like, he is a dick in yeah. this movie. But what do you think of Roy Kinnear's character? My first thought was I was expecting Ralph Bain to say, I want it now! Yeah. Because I remember him as the father in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, Faruka's father. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a small role, but it was cool seeing him in the movie. You know like, in a way, he almost stole the movie in the few scenes he was in. Yeah. Like, but... he was, his character was very funny, even though he, he was a funny character, but... I can't say he was necessarily a good person because he was dealing in this really dangerous shit, you yeah. know, Dracula's remains and all that. But I'm surprised he even, you would think that he would want to sell Dracula's remains because of what Dracula is. I think the whole point is he's like a sleazy businessman or yeah. something. Yeah, um, money, greed. Yeah, uh, and for the few scenes he's in, what did you think of Ralph Bates' character of Courtly? I think he was, despite that it was a small part, I mean, he was really good in it. I think I actually liked him better in this than, uh... As, Vic as Victor Frankenstein? Yeah, th because I I actually took him more serious in this movie than I did in uh, Horror Frankenstein. Yeah. I, Ralph Bates is an actor I actually really like, uh, yeah. so it was cool seeing him in this. I do kind of wish he was in the movie more as, like, a secondary antagonist. The scene where he drinks Dracula's blood and then he's in extreme agony, and then they start kicking him, I'm like... Why the fuck are you doing that? Yeah. It's like, yeah, he was a bit of a dick, and he pressured you into this satanic ritual, but why are you, why are you doing that? There, there was no reason for them to be kicking the shit out of him in that scene. So at that point, I'm like, maybe he's right to get revenge, even though it's Dracula who gets revenge. And again, I don't buy that Dracula would would get revenge for one of his servants. My, my guess is maybe they were just drunk or they just thought he was crazy it's it's hard to say that yeah there's lots of people i thought were crazy i didn't kick the shit out of them because that's a dick thing to do so that was our review on taste the blood of dracula our next movie review will be on the scars of dracula